Hello YouTube, Big Swole 58 here. Today I'm getting ready to start uh, a reconditioning and refinishing project of my latest uh, Smith & Wesson acquisition. And um, I'm going to start by refinishing the stocks. Uh, in previous videos I stated that uh, my stock refinishing is done in three or four steps. Uh, step one is to remove the old finish. Step two is to uh, mount and fit the stocks to the revolver. Uh, step three is to apply the new finish and then step four is to refine or polish the finish. Now steps one and two you can do them whichever order you so choose and today I've decided to uh, to fit them to the revolver first before I remove the old finish. Now when I bought this revolver it came with the uh, speed loader cutout stocks uh, mounted on them. Now I don't know if they came that way from the factory or not but this is the configuration that I bought uh, this revolver in. Now I'm more of a fan of the uh, extractor cutout stocks on uh, on model 66's but I haven't decided if I want to uh, use the uh, speed loader cutout stocks on this particular gun or not so what I've decided to do is I'm just going to uh, fit and refinish both pair and then decide later which one I want mounted on the revolver so the first step in this process is going to be uh, fitting the stocks to the revolver. I'm going to set these aside just for a second. Now, typically what, you, what you'll see with Smith & Wesson stocks is uh, you'll find that there's usually some uh, sanding marks underneath on the bottom of the uh, revolver stock panels and there's usually a a difference in height between the two panels and you can usually feel that that seam uh, and we're gonna smooth that out we're gonna true the bottoms up so that uh, that's far less pronounced uh, the same is gonna uh, take place here between the two panels where they come together uh, in the middle so that when the regrips applied you won't even feel that now uh, and we'll mount these and do the same now what I use uh, to true these bottoms up is uh, sandpaper and I'll normally use uh, 320 grit and, and that's going to depend on on how uneven they are or how rough uh, the bottoms may be uh, but I find that 320 grit works extremely well uh, you need a nice smooth sanding block uh, I will always use a piece of hardwood uh, I, I try not to be too aggressive with sanding paper on these because if you go down to a, a, a coarser grit like 220 you're going to remove a lot more of the wood than you want to and then you really you're just going to have to go back and sand it out anyway with 320 or 500 grit so I would rather start with a less coarse paper than a, than a coarser paper because it it just creates less work and uh, you really uh, don't want to remove any more material than you have to. You want a good firm surface to uh, to work with and uh, it's pretty simple. You just, uh, I'll just usually wrap the uh, paper on the sanding, on the sanding block. Uh, make sure that the smooth side uh, encompasses the paper then you just want to um, apply firm pressure and you start doing your sanding and I use the sand in a semi-circular motion which seems to give the, the best results and it doesn't take long with 320 grit paper to true that bottom up and remove most of that old finish but you really just want to concentrate on truing up the bottom, not so much removing the finish, because you'll do that in a later step. And it's really easy. It doesn't take much effort at all. And it removes all of the old sanding lines that Smith & Wesson left on from the factory. And it gives you a smooth transition between both panels. 
where you hardly will even feel that seam. And that's about it. Very little difference between the two panels. I'll sand it just a little bit more. Like I said, firm pressure, semicircular motion, make sure that the block stays flat against the bottom of the panels. You don't want to round over any edges. And I promise you, you'll be, you'll be happy with the way this looks and feels when you're done. And that is it for that bottom panel. Nice and smooth, can barely feel any transitions between the left and the right panel. Okay. So next, we'll move on to the uh, to the grip side. Now, here on the in the grip between the two panels, there's always going to be a ridge between the left or the right panel. It's almost impossible at the factory to get that perfectly smooth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a strip of sandpaper and I'm going to sand along this seam in order to remove that. And that's done fairly easy. You just take that same 320 grit paper and I'll usually cut a strip about that size And I just fold over and I just work right there. Doesn't take much at all. Again, a good smooth surface to work with. You just kind of rock back and forth over it. And before you know it, it's perfectly smooth. Now right here in this grip area could be a little tricky because you don't want to sand on, on, your, uh, on your revolver. So you just take a little care and you can do the same thing right here very easily doesn't take much at all just a little bit more now you could use a wooden dowel but I like to use my finger because I can I can get a better feel for you know exactly what's going on as opposed to using a wooden dowel just a little bit more and I know you're thinking that you that I'm changing the shape of this this stock but I am not all I'm doing is knocking off the high areas so that I have a nice smooth transition between the two panels. Okay. I don't want to say perfect, but much better than it was. Okay, that feels great, just like that. So, I'm going to remove the uh, extract loader cutout stocks, and I'm going to mount the extractor cutout stocks, and we're going to repeat the process. Cutout stocks, and I've mounted the extractor cutout stocks. Now, these seem seemingly have a much better fit uh, than the uh, speed loader cutout stocks did. But I'm going to true those up so that they're perfectly smooth between the two panels, just as I did with the, uh, with the speed loader cutout stocks. Again, start with a good hard working surface, some new uh, 
320 grit sandpaper wrapped around a good firm smooth block. You want to apply good firm pressure but make sure your block stays flat against your panels and I sand in a semicircular motion. This removes all of the factory applied sanding marks and it will give you a perfectly smooth nicely trued up set of grips. You want to be careful to keep it flat because you don't want to round over the edges. Now when you see a, a bright spot like that, that's a low spot in the, in the stock. Uh, that'll show up when you refinish. So what I'll always do is I'll try to sand that out as much as possible. But if it's too much, I won't worry about it because in the end it's really not going to be that big of a deal. But I say if you can get it right the first time, why not? Okay. That is super smooth. That is super smooth. I'll touch this up just a little bit. That doesn't feel very badly at all. Much better than the extract the cutout panels did, but just need a little work. As we love to say, straight butter. Now, <clears throat> because I want to create a very smooth finish, 320 grit is really a great finish for a, 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 it's smooth enough for applying your, your, your finish. But because I like the bottoms to be uh, uh, extremely smooth. I'll usually finish them off with 500 grit. And that 500 grit is going to uh, allow for a very smooth finish, but yet it'll still be uh, abrasive enough to uh, for the, uh, the finish to adhere to. So this is 500 grit. And I'm just going to just clean it up a little bit. That is extremely, extremely nice. The edges are sharp. That finish is going to look really nice. And I'll remount the extractor cutouts and do the same thing with them on the bottom with the 500 grit. And uh, that pretty much concludes the, uh, the truing process. I'll see you guys back on the stripping process. Big 58, signing off.